YouTubers, welcome back. It's Tyler here. And I got a lot for you guys today. We're going to go to Joe Simpson's shop, check out a stock block 5.0 turbo Mustang. And I finally almost got all the parts for my T350. I'm going to go over those in a little bit. And if you guys want to see this turd right here on the dyno, I need you guys to go to Joe Simpson's YouTube channel. I need you to subscribe, go in the comments and say, Dino Mr. Sparkles, which is my truck. And if he can get a thousand subscribers from now to like, a, I guess a month or so, he is gonna put this guy on the dyno for me for today. And we're gonna see exactly how little horsepower this guy makes to run tens all motor. So before I get anything else, let's go and roll that logo. All right, so here is all the hardened components that I'm gonna put in my TX350. Not really hardened, I don't, I don't believe this is hardened, but what they did for this guy is they put in roller bearings instead of a bushing, which is gonna create less heat and less friction. So let's go over top to bottom what all these parts are. Got my cheat sheet right here because I can't remember all of them, but I know this is a 36 element sprag and drum. This is a competition billet input shaft and drum assembly. This guy right here is, let's go down. This is a low drag rollerized front planetary carry assembly. It has been machined for a, you know, a roller bearing instead of a thrust washer. This guy right here is the HD heavy duty rear planetary carry assembly. This guy right here is, let me go back to my cheat sheet just because I'm not super versed in transmissions. This is a low drag rollerized rear ring gear assembly. So instead of bushing, it's going to have roller bearings also, create less friction. And last but not least is the, yes, this is the extreme duty low, lower roller clutch assembly. And I have never had a TH50 built to this magnitude. All my TH50s have just had a hardened sprag for the front drum, now 36 element. Everything else has been stock except for the valve body and clutches. And I have beat up a lot of those guys throughout the years. So hopefully this one is a bad mofo whenever it gets built. So I'm kind of just busting in on Joe right now. He doesn't know I'm here. Let's see what he's doing. Well, I made 460 wheel horsepower before it started messing up, right? Yeah, about 10 PSI. Uh, you see our closed loop correction is going about 20% because we're losing fuel pressure. Uh, estimated VE 175%, obviously that's not even in the general ballpark, which again is a result of the fuel pressure. And we dropped from 40 pounds to about 13 pounds. Um, so yeah, like I understood half of that, just half. <laughs> yeah, this is the, uh, oh, that thing is That thing is loud. Terrible. Uh, the unfortunate part of dynoing stuff is that uh, guys do a whole bunch of stuff to a car, new fuel pumps and injectors and a new EFI install and get it to the dyno with all these high hopes and uh, you know, then something, something like a fuel pressure problem pops up and 
Yeah. So I try and tell a lot of guys like, don't get your hopes too high on the first go around. It might take two, maybe three trips to the dyno because sometimes you're just spending the first two just finding problems like this. So this one's unfortunate because it's only 10 pounds. I mean, he his goal was to make 500 and that was only what, 50, 5,500 RPM? So another 1,000 RPM and it'd probably make oh, yeah. 500 no problem. So um, 500 is about the limit on these blocks, right? This is a stock yeah. block? Yep. And uh, it's got a little bit of aftermarket parts in it, but at this point the block itself is the weak link. Um, I don't remember what size turbo was on it. Probably 76 or somewhere around there. Um, and then uh, yeah, I have, I pulled an insane amount of timing out of this thing too, just to make sure it wouldn't uh, explode. Basically just for, base, for stuff like this, you start really conservative because you don't know you're gonna lose 40 pounds of fuel pressure. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, definitely. You have it real aggressive from the get-go, and then next thing you know, the block shoots through the wall and kills everybody in the room. So, <laughs> I'm trying not, to, uh, <laughs> trying not to break too much stuff. Well, I guess the good news is when I bring mine in, it's pretty much ready to go. It'll be minor tweaks to what you tell me to do. That's about yeah. it. Well, yours, I mean, you've been able to drive around on the street and test it, play with it. Like, this thing basically, like, came in I asked if it was running and I was told yes, but it came in on a trailer and when they started it to pull it off the trailer, it was like, sounded like it was running on two cylinders. So they got, <laughs> they got the EFI system in the car and it did communicate and start and run, but it was, you know, saying it was out in the left field is a little bit of an understatement. Um, so he, he really just didn't have a chance to, to play with it. Um, and again, like fuel pressure at idle is perfect. It's just once it starts building some boost that everything goes the wrong direction. Um, so unless he was comfortable enough to tune it into power he never would have been able to figure it out so yeah yeah or blow it up either one yeah one of yeah which just whichever one comes first <laughs> i see that weirdness going on right there it's like right on the rail yep it has i mean it has a vacuum line going to it it is a return style system with you know feed and a return and, and a boost reference so typically pressure would go up but um I just talked to him a couple minutes ago and he's, uh, he said his next thing he wanted to do was a fuel system, but, and then <laughs> as he said, he was, uh, I guess I'll be doing it sooner than I was anticipating. That's usually how that works out though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then it never fails. You put a fuel system in it and then you find the next weak link and you're like, oh, I guess I got to replace that too. And then you go to the track once and you're a tenth or two from running a number. So you're like, well, maybe I should buy that aftermarket block. Yep. Oh, I know. I know. It's a, <laughs> it's a. It's a vicious cycle that yeah, never yeah, stops, guys. It really is. Never ends. <laughs> so over here at the other side of the shop, we got some a very interesting things. This thing is definitely very interesting. Tell tell me tell me about this. <laughs> you know about as much as that I do. Like if you've ever been to English Town or Atco, you've seen how wild these these little old Corollas are going down the track. Wheelie bars and slicks that barely fit and all that, but uh, just it has a what you wouldn't expect in it, or I guess maybe you would since everything does nowadays, but years ago you wouldn't expect to see an LS1 in there. Oh damn, yeah, it's got an LS. It's a little rough around the edges, but um, it was at another shop. We supposedly tuned it, um, ran like crap, and uh, pulled it in, and within 30 seconds, I, I think they just took his money. Like, the, there's no way that they could have tuned it the way that it was. It just had too many things that were wrong. Map sensor not reading, and whatever else so uh, it runs good now i just need to get it on the dyno that actually might be next assuming i can get the rear wheels off that might be a challenge without well, taking the whole suspension off of the car yeah it looks uh it's definitely the the tightest ls swap i think i've ever seen in... <laughs> that's interesting yeah so the biggest problem is just going to be like once you close the hood down like it's just not going to get any airflow to it yeah i see that we'll dyno it with the hood open and then uh I'll just encourage him to, to cut the hood or something. Do a custom, in, if it was mine, I'd probably do like some sort of a custom intake manifold and brought the throttle body off to the oh, side. Oh, yeah, but yeah. I would just cut a hole in the hood and put like something right there. It's a quick and easy, quick and dirty way to do it. This one catches people off guard. Heck yeah, it does. Uh, LS twin turbo, pistons, rods. Uh, this one was here a little while ago and uh, just upgraded some things, um, added boost controller, upgraded cooling system. Uh, new fuel system. Um, so this one, um, and it's actually a manual trans, which is kind of weird. Um, so 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it just has 93 octane in it, which is going to be the limiting factor. But yeah, yeah. There's some 85 in it. This, I mean, this thing should probably make you know, 800 horsepower, no problem, if not more. That's going to be scary. Yeah, and these cars uh, are can get to be a little questionable, even with the little four cylinder motors that are in yeah. the high speed and stuff. Um, and I don't fit in the seat, so I might have to hire like. <laughs> Somebody real skinny for the day just to drive it. Every time I get in it, like, it's, uh, it's, uh. Well, I think I'm gonna mosey up on out of here. Joe's gotta get to work. I'm gonna hold him up any more than I already have. But if you guys wanna see my turd on this dyno right here, then go to Joe Simpson's YouTube channel. I got the link in the description. And make a comment on his videos, Dino Mr. Sparkles. And we can get a thousand more subscribers on his channel. He's gonna hook it up and we'll put Mr. Sparkles right here and then we can see exactly how little horsepower it makes. Do you have any uh, predictions on Mr. Sparkles? 360. I think it's around 360. I, everyone's gonna say it's supposed to make 450, but I do not think so. I was so. gonna say 120, but I thought <laughs> that might be a little rude. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you guys wanna see exactly how much horsepower it takes to get an S10 in the quarter mile running 10s in a then we'll see it here first so i'm gonna go back home and thank you good sir all right see you guys i'll later. see you later see ya.